Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Mai the King, and I just gotta say, it takes guts to be an organ donor. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam earlier today called The Lamplighters League, developed by Harebrained Schemes and published by Paradox Interactive. Released not in early access and selling for 50 American dollars. 50 dollars? Holy halibut, that's a lot of money. Well, it better be freaking worth it then. So, is it? Well, let's find out together. As always, we'll start with the good before going into the bad, followed by my final thoughts. Up first for the positives is the graphics, the look of the game. It's really nice to look at overall. The lighting is good, the contrast is good, the color deviations are good, just overall it's a very pleasant game to look at with its unique old fashioned kind of design and its attention to detail. It all looks just, it just looks very nice. Next up for the positives is the sound effects, music and voice acting. The voice actors, at least in my opinion, seem to be doing a pretty good job. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, but it's not bad either. As for the sound effects, they're pretty much on point. They sound exactly how you want them to, uh, exactly how you want them to sound. Splashing through puddles, uh, the gun sounds, the ambiance, and I could keep going on. It's pleasant on the ears, just overall. And then you've got the music. Again, it's good too. It's kind of old fashioned like the artistic design, but it's still very well done and nice to listen to. The music always matches the mood, which is good. It's never too overpowering, and it simmers in the background as it's supposed to, but not forgettable. So, you know, it's got a really good balance here. Alright, so up next we're going for here is the tutorial. See, now games like this, they know how to do a tutorial. It teaches you bit by bit, little by little, with just the amount of information that you need to learn how to do something without it being too wordy or overly complicated. And then, as they're giving you the tutorial step by step, they also have you apply the things you're learning all in tandem with a story as you're being introduced to the game and its characters. Overall, a great tutorial done very well, and if you know me or my channel, you know that this is always a big part of me taking a look at a video game its tutorial and this one did it good. The user interface seems pretty legit. It is a bit lacking on the options choices but everything is for the most part pretty easy to navigate and understand. The biggest problem with the UI however is that there aren't any tooltip bubbles explaining what something is or what it does. Like okay I know that this guy picked up bandages and I know what they do in theory but a lot of different games use them in other ways. You know it, it doesn't heal you but it stops bleeding or it will heal you or it'll do both. This game only lets you figure out what your what your item does when you're in combat and you're going to use them. So you'll have the bandage in your pocket and you have no idea what it's used for or how to use it and then you get into combat and it's like oh well now we'll tell you what it is and what it does. So in other words you're never going to know what something is or how to use it until it's time to use it due to a lack of tooltips. Now that's kind of frustrating and it's hard to plan ahead. And last but not least is the gameplay. This is also going to be in the negatives so make sure you keep watching. The gameplay, okay, it's not bad, alright, it's not like super great, but it's definitely not bad. It has its issues and its overall concept is kind of overused and not applied very well in some situations, but it's definitely not the worst that I've ever seen. You have a home base like XCOM where you can adjust and level up and equip your agents. You have missions you can go on where you can collect supplies, allies, other agents, all heading towards helping your ultimate goal and main story missions, which I'm not going to bring up at all here because I don't want any spoilers. It's got uh, sneaking mechanics, surprise mechanics, destructible environment, and unique skills that you can have with unique agent types who perform different things and different services per level. For instance, you have a bruiser, kind of the melee heavy hitter fighter kind of agent. You've got the saboteur, and you've got the sneak. Saboteurs can unlock doors, sneaks are better at hiding, and they have these assassination knockout type moves so you can take out lone guards. I don't know if there are other types of agents because I didn't get farther than that, but the game didn't really make me think that there would be. Uh, maybe there will be, I don't know. Same thing with weapons. While you can't change their weapons that I know of, you can adjust their armor and weapon mods along with accessories and inventory items that you can take with you and use on the battlefield like bandages or grenades. While you're in a mission, you can switch between your agents and utilize their skills in that level. You can then have the, you can have them move as a group or have them move as individuals since characters like the sneaks are harder to detect and might need to go and take out a lone guard. You don't want the other two following behind so you'll have your sneak go solo and then hide and, and make his way towards that lone guard. It's a lot like XCOM so keep that in mind. While you head to a mission you move your characters in real time but when the combat actually starts it's turn based cover kind of game. You know like XCOM so to be expected. Alright so that's all I got for the pauses. Up next is the negatives, but before we go into that, I need a little bit of help from my community. My channel only gets more public and more widespread if it gets more views. So I need my viewers out there to share my channel and my content online and help get the word out so that more people will actually see my stuff and then come check it out. It helps a lot more than you may think and I'd really appreciate it. Also a like and a subscribe would be nice too. Now then, on to the negatives. 
Now the first negative is that price tag, it feels way too high for a game like this. Don't get me wrong, it has nice graphics, sound, and voice actors, sure, but despite those nice things, $50 just seems a bit too high to me. I feel like $30, well, maybe not $30, maybe $40 would be more appropriate here. I mean, it lacks a lot of what I would expect from a $50 or $60 game. I can already tell how this game is going to go, and from what I've played so far, I really don't think that $50 is appropriate. So I'd recommend you wait for a discount. And what do I mean, you might be asking? Well, it doesn't have any big cutscenes, it doesn't have any large choices, it doesn't have a lot of replayability possibilities. And I was just expecting a much larger game with a higher production value image for $50. The next negative I have here is the gameplay. As I mentioned before, it's in both pro and con. And here's the number one reason. This XCOM similar game focuses almost all of its attention on being a stealth game, but then it imply it, it does its stealth awfully, terribly, it's bad, it's super easy to be spotted, it's very unforgiving if you happen to get spotted, and your characters are not powerful enough or designed well enough to fight your way through a level. What you're seeing now, what you're going to be watching right now is what happens when you get spotted in a level. I'm up against 10 enemies and I've only got 3 units. Each of those 10 enemies are significantly powerful. They all get to move after my turn is done and utilize their abilities. Like these shock troop kind of guys where they've got like a shotgun or something. They run right up to me, knock me on my ass, shoot me on the ground dealing critical damage and that was just one of the 10 units. So fine, just don't get detected then, you might be saying. Well that's impossible to do because only the sneaks can stay undetected easily. Your other characters are not good at hiding despite being agents of a stealthy organization in a stealth game. And to make matters even worse, your sneaks only get a certain amount of stealth knockout per attacks per level. So like for me it was three, that means that my sneak could only take out three guards stealthily. But the game threw 12 enemies at me. You're only seeing 10 here because there was one I got earlier and one I managed to avoid, avoid entirely who was at the beginning of the game. But the other 10? How the heck am I supposed to take these guys out when I only have 3 stealth attacks per level? Then these levels will have all these guards jam-packed into this tiny, hard to walk sneak through area where every one of them is watching a different corner. And again, to make matters worse, each guard has a large ring around them signifying their alert radius, which makes sneaking past them with anything other than a sneak character even more impossible. So it's a stealth game where the game clearly wants you to focus on stealth, makes it incredibly punishing if you get detected, and then makes it super hard to stay hidden and stay in stealth. And this was just the first level after the tutorial. If the level designs made more sense for a stealth game, or if the stealth was easier to manage and less punishing if you get detected, you know, then this might not have been, you know, that bad. It might have been a more legit format to play for this game. But for me, I found the stealthy aspects of this game to be very badly designed, overall unfair and too punishing. And this is going to be the rest of the game. So I'm sorry, but no thanks. And last but not least for the negatives is the stability. The game is riddled with bugs and glitches. Okay, it's not that bad, but it did have some issues that I want to bring up, especially since this isn't an early access release. Some of my commands weren't working. I would tell my character to do something and they just wouldn't do it. No rhyme, no reason, no explanation. They would just be in the middle of doing something and then freeze and stop and it would still consume AP. That, I don't, I don't understand. Sometimes my characters won't hide behind cover even when I'm telling them to, so obviously they're going to get spotted and it's going to alert the guards and I'm going to be facing the death screen again. They'll just stand there randomly for no reason at all, even though I didn't do anything except tell them to move behind that box to get into cover in the first place. Sometimes my party will ungroup for no reason, even though I didn't tell them to and nothing changed. They just suddenly stopped working together. There's no button to end an agent's turn either. You have to use all their AP, their action points, for their turn to end, even if you're done with them. So that's really annoying. Like at least in XCOM, once your unit ran out of AP, you know, they automatically went to the next unit. Why not do that here? If you're going to take everything else from XCOM, why not take that? I was also hit with multiple frame rate drops on every level and even during a loading screen. And overall, it just it wasn't running all that smooth. The gameplay wasn't working the way the tutorial told me it was supposed to work. And honestly, it probably needs a patch or two to clear up these bugs, which is probably what led to me lacking enjoyment a little bit. Alright, so that's all I got to say about the negatives. So, on to my final thoughts. What do I think of the game? Well, I mean, it's not really for me. I don't normally like to play stealth-based games because most of the time they just aren't done very well. Some games do do them well and even allow you to save your game before you do a risky move so that if you fail, you can load and try again. 
This one doesn't, by the way, or at least it wasn't letting me do it for some reason. So if you can save in the middle of this, you know, tell me it worked for you because it wasn't working for me. But this game's focus on stealth makes it slower, and when it's not even working right, or it sets you up in these really hard situations from just level one, it just turns me off on the whole thing. Now don't get me wrong, the game does do a lot right here. Its overall idea is interesting, the writing is really good, the plot is really interesting, the characters have good personalities that aren't all cringe. The gameplay, once updated a bit, could be very fun and still be challenging, but I worry it might become too repetitive. Honestly, even with the negatives that I mentioned before, I still think that this is a pretty good little game. Not really for me, but I don't think it's a bad game. Would I recommend it? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I personally would wait for a discount because I still don't think it's worth $50, you know, but it, so that's if it were me. But, you know, if you like the idea of a turn-based stealth game with some actual thought and effort put into it, then yeah, I would encourage you to try this game out. But if you're looking for something easier, more casual, less stealth, or more RPG-ish, then you might just want to pass on this one altogether. All right, everybody? Okay, so that's all the time I got for this video, everybody. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.